Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Nigerian biker Udo jo Ebaide Joy is making history as the first African woman to undertake a solo bike ride from Kenya to Lagos, Nigeria. Her journey, which began on the 8th of March 2024 in Mombasa, Kenya, spans over 90,000 kilometers across East and West Africa. Baide's inspiration for this journey comes from a life-changing experience at age 23 when a car accident left her wheelchair bound for months. After surgery to repair a spinal cord, she decided to seize life's opportunities and pursue this remarkable solo journey. Throughout her journey, Baide has traveled through Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, Zambia, and is currently in Angola. Well, now she's in Lagos. And she shares her experiences on Instagram, noting um, the unique personalities and rumorously mentioning the challenges of riding on sand and inviting training offers from Nigeria. Well, she's here with us in the studio and to have a conversation on this remarkable journey is Evide Joy, who is an adventurer, if I can say that right. Yes, and I am. Hi, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. thank you for having me all right so let's just get right into it i know that you had an accident but what else um inspired this because i know that sometimes you can go through certain things in life and you just say you know what i want to take this opportunity i want to live my life to the fullest but um that might just be um the catalyst to that journey so what else inspired this remarkable journey because it's not an easy feat to ride on a bike <laughs> from east Africa to West Africa. Tell us. Okay, so um, I'd always known that I would travel. Mm. Growing up, I always wanted to travel. I never felt comfortable being in a space for too long. Mm. I don't like confinement. I don't like forward buildings. I'd always wanted to travel. Yes, like you said, that was a catalyst that the accident yeah. was what prompted the whole decision. Like, I'll just go because then I realized how truly short life is and mm. I couldn't wait. I can't wait. I'm I'm losing youth as the years go, and sure. I, youth is what I have the most to see what I want to see now. So yeah, uh, it was just the best time to do the trip. I'd already been traveling. This was just too wild and um, more popular than my previous travels. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so tell us about the journey because I, I understand that it's, it's, it's okay to say, oh, I, I love to travel, I love to travel, but having to plan that itinerary, mm. It's one thing to say, I want to travel and go to the UK. I want to go to the US. But planning that and saying, you know what? I want to do several countries just on a bike. How did that come about? Ah, it took a lot. Okay, the truth is, all the plans I made before I started were plans I never used. Because mm. then I changed my route over time. And then I kept planning. I planned until the day I got to Nigeria. The day before I got to Nigeria, I still changed my route. Because, okay. <laughs> actually, yes, because I had a crash. And then I couldn't ride for a while. So I had to change my route and go uh, by water instead of, yes, to arrive in Nigeria. I arrived in uh, Akwaibom. That wasn't the plan. So plans change as things happen on the road. Uh, it didn't matter how much I planned in the morning. Something would always happen during the day that I never expected. So I was always ready for the unexpected. Uh, the plan before the start of the journey was quite extensive. I had already begun planning it since last year. I had made contact. I have friends who were overlanding at that time using that exact route. So mm -hmm. I was getting inf information as time went on. Visa was the most struggle, but somehow I was able to pull through. Something that I heard was water. What do you mean you had to come through water? <laughs> <laughs> I put my bike on a small flying boat. Like it was, my heart was... And then you continued... Oh, I mean, look at pictures. That's amazing. Uh, so you had to you. put the bike on water. On yeah, the boat, yeah, yeah. Then uh, another boat. So okay. there was a boat for cargo, and then there was another one for passengers. Uh, it was a tumultuous journey. Was that I the really only time you had to go through water? Oh no, no, I had to go through water like four times. Because wow. there was a time water ended in Angola, and I either had to go through the DRC to connect to the safe Congo. Mm. or then ship my bike i shipped that in uganda I, I used water twice i used ships twice so i uh, shipped twice so yeah i have done yeah water about four or five times thereabouts mm. that's amazing but mm. so we're talking about training um you've been riding for how long huh <laughs> 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 not up to a year <laughs> oh my goodness yeah, not up to a year still not up to a year Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> Thank you. On the 25th of July, uh, it would be exactly a year since I bought, since I paid for my bike. 
Yeah, oh so, and then they brought God. my bike a week later, and then I went to train in Nairobi because my bike was brought to Mombasa. I trained in Nairobi and started riding the last week of August. That was when I started riding a bike. <laughs> and in less than a year, you decided to go on this. Yes, yes, I can. In in five ten years, I can't even imagine what I would have done because yeah. <laughs> I just can't. I can't. I truly can't wait to get out already. Oh on the motorcycle yes yes that is amazing <laughs> that is really really amazing Thank having you. having to do this now we, like i said like you said i can't imagine what you're doing doing 10 years are you going to yeah. be moving over to other i don't know i'll probably be riding in space <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's talk about support um mm. i'm sure you gotten a lot of support not just from family members but even the people that you probably don't know that have been cheering you on on the sidelines how did this make you feel Ah, uh, it made me feel good, great. Um, when I started this journey, what happened? When did you when arrive in Nigeria? On Saturday, okay. the past, yeah. not this Saturday, the last one, week, yeah. the 29th of June. Yes, um, before starting, people didn't believe me. When I started, most people didn't believe me. Mm -hmm. But some people supported me regardless. Now, the people who didn't believe in me and didn't support me made it open where the people who made me stop some social media platforms right mm. because i needed my own mental health to be intact but then people supported me immensely and then i tuned towards that uh, and yeah the support has been there people have been cheering me on it's great to be here mm. there's another kind of support i wish i was getting but i feel like that would come with time what kind of support is that yeah i, <laughs> 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 I feel like that will come with time yeah. but for now yes it's it's good enough that people are cheering me on even though i've just begun yeah yeah, yeah. how has this journey reflected you know how have you reflected on it how has it affected your life or impacted your life personally I, it has taught me that if i don't get it then i don't want it enough like Ooh, yes I like yes that. yes yes i when i was stuck in situations i thought i wouldn't get out of okay so i'm the kind of person who would lock myself up and cry 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 but while i'm crying i'm getting solutions i can't i can't count how many times i cried on the journey how many times i got stranded but oh. somehow i got out of i'm here i'm here mm -hmm. and it was my first time doing it the whole planning doing it all on my own in countries i didn't even understand the language do you mm -hmm. uh, it, it was so much but somehow i still try and i got here so if i don't get that thing then i truly don't want it enough mm. So talking about, you know, being stranded, what sort of challenges did you face? Because I know that there might be some kind of cultural differences, because if you're going to other countries, you, there's that language barrier. Um, there's always going to be some form of challenge or another. So aside that, what other challenges did you face on this journey? Okay, challenges, uh, security for starters. Mm. Uh, I'm a girl. And yeah. then, so I traveled very quietly and slowly. I took my time and then I am not someone who makes noise. Mm. I'm not a noisy traveler. Yeah, so it was important that I kept quiet, never rode at night. There were, there were rules on my rule book that I adhered to. But when you talk about cultural differences, ah, that was crazy. I went through eight countries. Nigeria was the ninth that I rode into. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the countries, some of the countries didn't speak any English. Wow. Uh, yes, I understand Swahili to a good extent my french is yeah okay <laughs> but somehow i got through the cultural differences financial problems to challenges i encountered a lot uh but somehow i scaled through now i'll be looking to fix the financial part of it because then i suffered with card the card not working in a particular mm. country transfers and it, it was crazy sometimes even when i had money i couldn't use and then money ran out sometimes, of Aww. course, because I was on the road. Yeah. A lot of things came up that, that you, you wouldn't even plan need to for. keep topping up your fuel. Oh, no, I paid for accommodation every day. Every wow. day for almost four months in the hotel. Every single day, apart from that fuel, then Visa was taking so much money. Oh. That it, it was a lot that uh, I, I, tra I went to more countries than I'd planned initially. Mm. I spent more time than I'd planned. So, of course, money <laughs> finished <laughs> at some point. <laughs> But did you get some form of financial support, um, maybe from family on. and friends, as the money mm. was as the money was running out? Okay, so I don't have so many friends and family in that sense. Okay. So yes, uh, but then midway, my manager came in. Then okay. he supported, and then uh, yeah. That, that <laughs> but I, I mean, you're here now. Regardless of the challenges, you did it. Yes. You did it. And so if you were to, if someone was supposed to go on a similar journey, because you've seen the, the rave, especially when someone tries something, 
everybody wants to try that same thing again. True, true. And it's it, in a way, I, I see it as commendable. I see it as doting because it's almost like you're being a form of inspiration to others. So if someone's going to copy my work, I really don't mind. You're just I, telling me that I did it well. Yes, I'm actually waiting to see the next person who picks up a motorcycle. I'll be so happy. I'll cheer them on. Like yeah. I'm waiting to see it. I want to see their journey. I want to see an African girl do this. I want to see someone go through what I've just gone through. Yeah. I'll cheer the person on so much from start to finish. So what kind of advice will you give that person, especially if they want to embark on such a journey? Ha, be sure be sure about it <laughs> uh, because it doesn't matter what you plan for what you Life do how accurate happen. your plans go things will happen because you don't know what's on the road and you are in different countries different terrains you, you really can't tell what will happen so be sure put things together but know that you have enough confidence to do it i rode with fear the whole time sure. from yes while i, I was like for several kilometers, you won't see any vehicle, any motorcycle, and you would keep riding, you know. Anything could happen in the middle of forest. Uh, yeah, so I, I did everything with fear. So it's okay to be scared. My fears keep me alive. It's, mm. it's okay to be scared. But as long as you know that you can overcome those fears and the thing you are planning is feasible in any area, maybe not even travel, any area, as long as you're sure, I think you should pursue it if you know that you can scale through mm. and be sure. So let's talk about the security challenges because we are saying that you're riding through kilometers without seeing anyone. Was anyone with you or were you just riding alone? I was just riding alone. I was traveling alone. All my so things were in my box. So how are you documenting box. your journey? Okay, so I started traveling with a drone, a 360 and a GoPro. My 360 and GoPro went bad in oh. one country. My drone, I didn't get to use it because I was too cautious. Yeah. And I, I'm just starting motorcycling. I tried it the first time in Uganda, stopping in the middle of the road, doing the whole drone and everything. I, I felt like it was dangerous, and I'm, I'm not there yet with I motorcycling. Think it would be time consuming as well. So yes, yeah. yes, yes. I rode a keke one time, and I, I, I used my drone for that. That's a mm. keke. It's four wheeled, it stands on its own. It's okay, you know, mm. but with it, uh, I'm still getting used to it doing it with a motorcycle so my drone and 360 went bad i got another 360 and that one covers everything you know 360 is all yeah, around so yeah. that one stood in for not having two cameras mm. yeah so i mostly use a 360 yeah. through the journey yeah yeah so riding by yourself of course there would be some fears how did your family feel knowing that you are going on this journey alone <laughs> and, and, and then you're a girl <laughs> um yeah People express their fears. I was scared too. Mm -hmm. So if I was planning the journey, I'm the one with the heart, the mm -hmm. mind to do it. <laughs> now imagine people who didn't have the mind. Yeah. So yes, people were scared for me. But I've, I've done different things in my lifetime. It's, it's, a, wow. it's not so long. I've not lived for so long, but I've done so much in such a sh short time. What so, other things have you done? Please ah, tell us. That's a lot. We'll talk about that another time. But yeah, I've done different things. Uh, I think I was ready for this when I thought I was ready for it. So that's that's fantastic. I mean, it's such a great feat to actually embark on such a great journey. Thank but you. what are like your future plans? So what are we expecting? What can we expect from you now? Uh, <laughs> what other things would you like to? Because you seem like an adventurous person. You seem like someone who just think of something and spontaneity. You're like, let's do it. Let's make it happen. So what else? What else do you have in your bucket list? Mm, there is nothing spontaneous about my next trip. <laughs> What's okay. going with spontaneity? It's already been planned. It, it I okay. started planning it before. I already knew that was the second phase of my African tour. Okay. It is Nigeria to Morocco. So I ride through the coasts all the way to Mauritania and then cross into Mauritania and then through the West Sahara into Morocco. So these are routes that you've not gone through. So it's almost like you're going. Th all of no. Af into all of Africa, uh, yes. something like that. But I traveled, I backpacked through this route, Nigeria to Sierra Leone in 2018. Mm -hmm. So I'm familiar with uh, that far, countries okay. that far. Yes. Then after that, I don't know. I'll, I'll see. You see. So what mm -hmm. are you looking forward to? To so on the trip? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's West Africa for starters. I don't need visas. That would be a huge step forward because yeah. uh, visas, having to get visas individually for every country. For this past trip really drained me it was time consuming financially too and time energy uh it, no visas uh i won't be paying extraordinary fees expensive fees for tourist sites because mm -hmm. i won't be charged okay there they call them muzungu muzungu are okay. so they charge 
normal Africans as Oyimbos. Here oh, it's different. Okay. Uh, so it would be much, much easier for me. And now I'm not a newbie at mm -hmm. motorcycling. I am much, much better than when I more started. More confident. Yes, yes, way more confident. Now I can turn, I can lean my bike. It was really bad because I started at below 2,000 kilometers under my belt. Mm. ever so it was hard for me to do many things when i started but now it's, it's different i'm more experienced more confident yeah that's fantastic thank you let's just go to another route which <laughs> is like which makes me happy because food makes me happy so mm. going to all of these countries having to explore um i'm sure you had to tap into their culture into their food their lifestyle just tell us about that ah east africa mm, kenyans know that they don't have food it is very normal. We all know. <laughs> Every West African that goes to East Africa, Kenya, uh, especially, they all complain. Aww. They don't have so much. And I heard they don't eat a lot of pepper, though. They don't eat pepper at all. Not a lot. Wow. They call it pili pili, and then you almost never see it. You see it in supermarkets. Wow. You see. So uh, when I now I'm a bit used to Kenyan food because I started living in Kenya a few years back. Yeah. So now I'm used to it. But then going from country to country, I ate rice a lot. Because yeah. it was the only familiar thing. Yeah, then chicken and cheese. <laughs> exactly. If I wasn't from Nigeria, maybe I wouldn't have suffered so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But Nigeria has a lot of food. We have so many tribes. Mm -hmm. And my mouth, okay, because I lived in Ibadan and Lagos, my mouth is used to spicy foods. Mm. You know, so I started seeing some Nigerian ness in Angola when I got to Angola, then Aww. down Congo and Cameroon. Yes, mm. oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Thank All you. All right, so uh, finally, what kind of legacy would you like to? leave especially when it comes to your achievements and all of these adventures what are you looking forward to in the future ah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very interesting question mm -hmm. um okay so for starters the thing we call settle down is not exactly my portion in this lifetime maybe the next one mm. i won't be doing the traditional settling down yeah yeah so that means i plan to do this for a very long time mm. even when i get old and i'm not motorcycling or doing anything rigorous i would still be doing this so whatever legacy i would leave would be live your life to the fullest till you die <laughs> like there is no time to because it's too short and you don't have a second chance at doing it at least not with the same consciousness mm -hmm. so milk the one you have and that's mm -hmm. the legacy i want to do. i want to milk this lifetime i have yeah that's amazing that's <laughs> thank amazing. you milk the life that you have it's important <laughs> It's important that we stay and we have this adventurous spirit whereby we want to explore, we want to learn, we just want to see how beautiful life is. True. Um, if when, you, when you keep staying in one place, you're not even growing because mm. going into other countries, exploring what they have, it kind of like helps your mind. Yeah. You know, it yeah, opens up your mind. It, see, it makes you see the world full of possibilities. True. And I'm so happy for you and your journey and I cannot wait to see what you do next. Thank you. Thank you so much for <laughs> Thank coming. You too. It Thank was you so lovely. Much having a conversation with you thank you thank it was you. nice to talk to you too Same. all right so we've been speaking with s with joy a by day she's an adventurer and a biker and we've just been talking about her journey from east africa to west africa and we cannot wait to see what the future holds for her all right that's it on the show today thank you so much for having a breakfast with me my name is brume paulson i'll see you again tomorrow have an amazing day is with me. My name is Brume Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.